You ever have a dream? A dream so big, you don't know if it's gonna happen. But it's like the life you have, you know, it don't fit you. Like this shit ain't real. Bella on the bell. If I can make it here, then I can make it anywhere. They ain't playing fit. Told me it's gonna take five years. I got two. I got it's two. time to put this thing in gear. I started wiping tears and started facing fear. Yeah. Now my vision clear. I could breathe fresh air. I'm in the hood, but found the way about it. Yeah. I told my family I don't need no college. This right here is what you call balance. Yeah. Some relationships can get clouded. I'm blessed, beautiful, talented, and well rounded. Yeah. I have to finish it with no status. Yeah. You gotta find hearts with no malice. Yeah. Find guys that are not childish. Yeah. In your dreams, I could be your wildest. Some yeah. relationships cannot salvage. Some people talk it, but they not about they it. Not Some about people it. see it, but they not around they it. Not I'm around trying it. to open my first check and be astounded. Yeah. Look for a passion, then I went and found it. I put my all into it, then I seen the blessings, and I started counting. Count. This is real life. Always had a feeling this wasn't my, my real life. life. Knew it was real. better, and this ain't what it feels like. Yeah, Remember childhood it. days riding in dirt bikes. I, I was always the type to dream and be business like. I had a choice to always go ahead and do right to you the type the person that i unlike different we are not alike not this is still a fight for my career my future life to drive a whole life to me i made a goal millions record sold yeah. sold out show yeah. hit the model pole yeah. she's on vogue yeah. the queen rose Ow. she got goals now nah, she is gold. She, gold. she switch roles she controls yeah. she touch souls i want payrolls bank rolls stay low she tip tops on her pink toes her aura whoa it's really like, damn, if she was a star, cause she had it from within. They know if she would be great, cause she always had a plan. So they knew it back then, and yeah, they knew it back then. Can it had just watch me destroy it? I got plans to be, you know, the fortress. No Beyonce, but your girl flawless. Dreams sold, no refunds, no returns. Can burns for dreams of my concern. Since a young and short, we had big dreams. Grew up on Fort and Street, chasing the big dreams. Ran into seas, goddamn, that was a big thing. Hey, 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 this is Ebony J with the Purpose Radio Show and Podcast. And today we have a very important, a very special guest, artist, speaker, mentor, Chosen King. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's going on, Ebony J? Thank you for having me here. No problem. How are you, Chosen? I'm doing well. I won't yes. complain. Every day is better than yesterday. Yes, yes. So how long have you been pursuing music? Uh, I'd say consistently I've been pursuing music for the past eight years. Nice. But as far as being in the underground scene or, you know, being in that space, the right. past 10 years. Yeah, this year makes 10 years. So, yeah, it's been a while. Wow. So how would you say that it, um, that it started? Like, how has your musically journey been? Because I know you told me you have a little bit of a church background. Oh, yeah. So but how exactly has music began for you? So music, sorry, let me. It's okay. I'm yeah. still looking in your eyes, even with the shades on. Nah, I don't care. Let me be respectful. Um, so yeah, it definitely started for me in church. Yeah. Um, it started in the home first. Nice. Uh, when it comes to hip hop, uh, my uncle used to actually like play a lot of hip hop, and my mother wouldn't want me to hear it because he's playing <laughs> all the unedited. So that's early '90s hip hop. Yeah. And a lot of R&B, soul, oldies gospel pop from my mother you know yeah. west indian background you cleaning on saturday so you're hearing yes. everything in the house and then you know we also were very very and still are um involved in the church so i definitely say the church started it for me because you know in church it's not about you right you're just a vessel you're a conduit so um you know i was definitely uh not that bold or secure with a lot of my gifts until i yeah. got older so in church you know there's no judgment there's freedom in the spirit so that provided the space where it's like, you know, you could sing and you could dance. So, you yeah. know, we used to do that in the youth group. And then eventually I transitioned to doing it myself in high school. Nice. Yeah. Alrighty. Shout out to Triumphant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, shout out to church. Thank God. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. God is good. So tell me a little bit about the meaning behind your name. I have a lot of questions. Cause, oh, but let's, let's start live. with. Chosen King. What's the okay. meaning behind Chosen King? Um, well, again, it started in church. Yes. Uh, I received a prophecy, and a, the prophecy was going back to the word, and one of the things that God said was, didn't you know that I chose you before you were even in your mother's womb? 
And, you know, even when you study, you learn that everything is released by a word. Yeah. Everything that was created was released by something. It all was here and was released in a moment. So chosen actually comes from the Latin, which means ek logos, which means out of the word, capital W, which is a representation for God. God used words and released words to create. Right. And then the king aspect and why I made it lowercase is because it was a period where everybody was trying to call themselves king, but make yeah. it seem like there could only be one. Right. And why I made it a lowercase is because the king is less a title and more just who you are. Everyone is the king or queen or whatever ruler of their own world, their own little space. And it's just about what you do with the authority that you have in life. Yeah. So that's why the chosen is big because we are all chosen for something. And that's why the the title is smaller because it's not really about that. We, we can all be that. Yeah, you so, have the chosen um, capital. Yeah. And you have a one O. Yeah, chosen. Yes. Yeah. So it's less about I'm being chosen and more about it's just who I am. It's, right. It's just my name. Beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get a little bit into about you being a speaker and a writer as well. Um, well, that's my nature of work. Uh, I work with students. I'm a mentor. Um, I've been in every in every like sort of job I've had, whether it was teaching, teaching assistant, counselor. Every job I've had on some level, you know, when you're working with youth, you have to speak. And then also, I was very involved in the youth group in my church. So yeah. when you're involved in either you know community based things, and you're young, and you can speak, and you actually have something to say, you know. You're given the platform to do so. So I always had that when I was younger, and I was involved in Global Kids, a lot of com community service-based organizations, right. non um, nonprofit orgs. So, you know, when I wasn't bold enough to sing and dance and all of that, I was always bold enough to write. I always understood the importance of words and language and the power in it. So, um, yeah, when I had the opportunity to, I'm very passionate. So when I was passionate about something, I speak, and it sort of started with that, and now it's literally a part of my career. Yes. Yeah. Um, you also have chosen ones, the Cultivation Collective. Yeah, that's that's pretty recent. That's, yes, that's, that's what you're working on right now. Yeah, that's um, and it's it's really fun. It's and why I'm sort of smiling is because it's so new and it's um, um, exciting to sort of start something different. What the collective is, it's it started off with my mindset. Um, anyone who knows me. Uh, anyone who's seen me over the past years, they know I'm yeah. pretty supportive. Um, I don't really ask for much. It, right. It's just coming from my heart. And a lot of the best moments in my life or in my or in my creative journey have come from just that authenticity um, in my character, being sincere yeah. and not necessarily forcing anything. I'm trying to have opportunities with creatives when I'm networking. Like Networking becomes pretty cliche if everyone's doing it the same way. So um, bringing back having genuine interactions with creatives because I realize what we come up with, it's purer, it's better. Yes. Um, it's not, it may have aspects that can benefit us, but it's no longer self-serving. Right. Um, because you already got fed in yep. sort of the creation process. We linked up one time, got to talk, chop it up. It was a great day. Yep. So it becomes more than work. Now I feel motivated and fueled to do more. So what I'm doing mm -hmm. is setting up sessions with people where we you know, creatively collaborate where um, I can give insight. I'm, I'm very good when it comes to seeing something, vision. Yeah. So I can sort of be that air that someone wants to um, bounce an idea off of and I'm connected to resources in which we can help make that vision real. But it doesn't have to be taxing. It doesn't have to be painful. The art doesn't have to be work even when we work in Exactly. It can still feed you because that's what it's for to feed, to bring insight, to edify, to build you up, to make you feel good. So, um, yeah, I don't want people to lose that in the creation process. So we're setting up sessions to do that. And come, whatever we come up with, we put it out. So how does the sessions work? Like, how do you actually set up the sessions? Well, um, so far it started off by directly contacting me because okay. I do creative direction. Nice. And um, based on what the person wants, and that's what it, that's the cultivation aspect. Based on what you, what's needed, we help you find those resources or I connect you to people within my family. That's how I call it the family. I connect yeah. you to people within my family who I know can do that job well. Um, sometimes we try to do everything ourselves. Sometimes, again, we're looking to look out for self, and that's important. But um, I don't know. My heart is just not set up like that. And my life has been a blessing, and I, 
and I've had lucrative opportunities while still being me. So just find a way to systematically do that on a bigger level. So I have my brother, um, K Curtin Photography, um, as well as um, Legacy Geo online. He does photography as well. See, like I have friends I'm connected to, cash photography, photography. There's a few photographers that I know. So yeah. I'm working on photography as well, and I'm a creative director. But rather than you just pay me, what I would be doing is connecting you to these resources. Right. Um, Merce- um, Madam C's. C's just worked with me on something that's coming out real soon. And I believe that by connecting you genuinely to those people, I don't lose. It doesn't right. hurt me. So it, it just expands the network. And I watched other groups and collectives who have done that, the leaders of the new school, um, tri- which out of that, you know, Tribe Called Quest was in mm-hmm. that camp. Um, I look at Timbaland and that whole collective and how everybody thrived, but nobody felt like they were stepping on each other's toes because they just kept it in the circle, kept it in the family. And I feel like we need to do that in our community, literally, so why don't I start doing that small scale with how I create? Yeah. And, you know. How, how important is it for you to network and create these genuine connections to people? How important is it to me? Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, that's how, like, I don't remember exactly how we met or where we met, but I just said, I just know that every time I see you, it's, like, genuine vibes, always good vibes. I like, you're a that. great person. Like, And it's so genuine, you know? Like, you can tell, like, it's real, it's so authentic. Yeah. So um, how important is that to me? Yes, exactly. Um, like for you, like networking for people and for you to just stay true to yourself. I think the latter is the most important. I think why networking became important is because I knew it was important to our field. Right. And Definitely I know important. personally I had an issue with that. Like I'm an extrovert and introvert, so I'd be out there and everyone sees me being yeah. a vibe of when it came time to follow through and have these conversations and, I didn't even know how to look at myself in that way to be able to have an elevated pitch or promote myself in a certain way or even think of what to talk about when networking, like what's important enough. Um, And I realized that that was something I needed to work on. So in working on that and working on those insecurities, I honestly thought of other people who might feel that even in my own circle. I got a lot of dope people that I know, and for some reason this plateau effect be hitting us. Right. I'm like, it's not that we're not dope. It's not that there's some ceiling. It's like after we get out of our own way, how do we get back out there? Because now you also got to get over muscle memory. Yeah. You got over the fear part in your head, but now you got to practice some new habits. And that's hard if you've been nervous. So yeah. what what would I want networking to look like for nervous old me a couple of years ago? Right. And I started putting that out there like, hey, I'm going to take the legwork, the thinking out of it for you. Hey. My name is Chosen, blah, 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 blah. I Damn. got an idea. Da, 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 da. We were at an event, and I think I took your pictures for you. I think that's what yeah. it was. Um, that wasn't the very first time, but it was the time that stuck. Okay. <laughs> we was at a Wolfpack event, and you had that yellow and gray um, jumper suit thing. It was like silverish. Like, okay. uh, and I took pictures on your phone, and you really liked the pictures. <laughs> And I, I sent pictures. them to you, and that's literally how we reconnected. But even off a of little moments like that, now yeah. I'm doing creative direction. Exactly. So yeah, I just try to pour back and stay open. And this is years later, like yeah, for a fact. when when we first met, it was years ago, and now we're here. Yes, yes, yes. So let's speak about your book. You have a second book coming out. But yes. Let's get a little bit into your first one. I didn't put it out. Okay. <laughs> Why not? I didn't put it out. I, again, insecurities is real, man. I had to. Stop I had to being oh no, I'm not insecure you now. Cannot, yeah. That's not what it is now. But then uh, I wrote it when I was between the ages of 19 and well, I, yeah, I wrote it between the ages of 19 and 21 or so. Yeah. So a long time ago. Right. Um, it's when I was doing spoken word. I learned that. Shakespeare, all of his sonnets, if you put them together, they're all like one giant story. Right. So I thought of, you know, my first feelings of love, and I kind of broke them into separate poems, and each of them connected. So it was just one giant story. And then that book of poems was one narrative, and it was called Stargazers. Yeah, Stargazers. I got it. It's printed and all that. It's in the house. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to put it out one day, or I think I'm going to do a visual sort of... You're good, with o- you're good with audiobooks, so maybe you should do that. If, if all else fails, audiobooks. 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 I'll just hey. be like, <laughs> I'm weak. Do, 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 Audio do, do. therapy. Yes. Big on that. So, chosen. 
Let's get into. So, what is your second book going to be about? Um, I know I want it to be culture based. I want it to speak about men and their emotions. Um, sort of transparency and vulnerability. Yeah. And how we break out of the narrative that we kind of feed ourselves. Um, I watched women, especially over the past decade, at least amongst the millennial group, do a lot of work, um, whether it was individually or communally. Um, no matter what their faith base was, no matter it's literally the same work happening. Yeah. And I'm just seeing, you know, the strength and the healing happening with uh, black women. And I definitely feel like we need that. And we have a lot of people that can speak about it, but for some reason we tend to only talk about certain parts of yeah. things. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. So, <laughs> so I want to talk about the more vulnerable things that we're not talking about, all the insecurity-based things that we're not talking about. Let's keep it a buck with each other. Let's have these conversations. And I intend on starting that by first having conversations. Right. Say setting yourself. up monthly conversations with men just so they can talk, just so they can vent. I'm not a, I'm not licensed yet. I'm working on it for my life coaching. But at the end of the day, it's really just about being a soundboard. And from that, then I will create sort of a collective piece that takes all of the things that need to be said from those conversations right. with respect to the people there. So it's going to be like uh, all men. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want it to just be one one narrative. Right. Um, I want to touch on topics that affect all men, um, but I want it to be the topics that all men aren't willing to talk about. Right. And from those men that are willing to talk about it, I feel like we could heal. We got to pull off some scabs. There's still yeah. a bunch of stigma. There's a bunch of schemas that we all have, myself included, that it's just hard to get over because we just been that way for so long. Right. And that's not an excuse and we're doing the work, but I do feel that we need to communally do the work. That piece, we all doing the work and we might do it with our bros over here and stuff. But I'm seeing women literally just have conferences just to, like and I know it's out there for and what us. What are you but, saying what are you saying about women? This is just to be clear. No, I'm See saying that women are I said it already. I said that there's a lot of healing and growth happening with yeah. black women. Because right. of the work being done. Yeah. And I'm saying that I'm not seeing it in the Within same the way. No, no, I'm not saying that I'm not seeing it. I want to make sure that it's clear okay, that I'm not saying Okay, that's what I'm saying. I want to no, get no, no, clear no, no. on I'm, everything. No, I said it. <laughs> I said the words. You twist. Listen, I said that okay. I see it okay. within black men, but it's not seen in the same level or way visibly. The work is happening with us. I know some of my boys that's putting in work and trying to heal and grow and everything. Right. But the level of communal, meaning I will literally go to a park and see 30 women committed at that point in time, no matter what their journeys are, we're having this this session is about insert whatever it is here. Yeah. We're going to sit. We're going to talk. We're going to do these activities. We're going to. It's very cathartic yeah. because you are in that moment in time, real time, going through this with another person who you know is having the same experiences that you or has had similar. Right. So we have that, and we do that a lot conversationally with men and, you know, with our talks and with our crews and with our bros and all yeah. of that. But I always, because I haven't seen it in the same way, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but because I haven't seen it as prevalent, I always wanted to just see that. I had one birthday before before the Rona and the before times. Before the Rona. <laughs> in the before times. I had a birthday where that was what I wanted for my birthday. I set up different events throughout the month and at the end I hit up all my bros. Yeah. Like literally I hit up like forty men and I was like, I wanna spend the day with y'all. Right. That doesn't always happen unless you're in a or in you're already in some sort of brotherhood, fraternal set yeah. structure. You have multiple brothers in your family, but that's not always the norm outside of turning up or going like right. literally like, yo, let's go on a retreat to heal. Right. They're like, what? That's right. That's not always the easiest yeah. conversation to have. Keep it a stack. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's not helpful. It doesn't mean that it's not cathartic. Why right. the only spiritual retreat I've been on is in church? I can think of that. I, I believe my only <laughs> right. my only spiritual retreat was in church too. It was like a snow. It was during the winter, a snow day. And then I went on IG one day, and I I see some of my homegirls doing the work. They setting up like Jay Rose had a retreat. She had a retreat for riders. I know Rosella's doing the work. Oh, yeah, I know, Rosella's like, there's a bunch of people that are doing things. And again, I made I'm supposed sh- to be going camping at the end of the month. Like I made sure, and again, it's 
Why I made sure I said irrespective to the faith is because sometimes we try to make it a faith-based thing yeah. when it's not. Certain healing and work needs... To, what? It has right. nothing. You could do that and still believe in whoever you believe. Right. But you're addressing certain needs that are beyond what people can see. Being those social, The social-emotional aspect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's important, especially as I'm getting older, because right now we're in the period of life where we create the habits that our kids are going to see. This is what they're going to pick up on subconsciously. And that's how cycles really keep going before they're even taught. They're observed. So I want to intentionally start changing certain habits. I'm sorry for going off on that. I'm really No, because I was going to ask you how important is mental health and self-love to very, you. Very important. <laughs> very, yeah. Extreme, extremely important. Right. It's core it to my whole be, brand, yes. my being, my balance. Like you ha- you're a dynamic being. Why do we only address certain aspects of the dynamic? Right. It just doesn't make sense on paper. Even if you did the math, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I want us to heal on purpose, not vicariously. I want us to heal intentionally, not because it's it's palatable in the moment or because all my friends is going to do it. I want, like, that proactive type of, you know? Right. So I just want that for us. I want what I see happening for so many others. I, I really do want that for us. Yeah. It exists outside of small sectors. You go to I church believe we can make it happen. Oh, no, that's a fact. It can definitely happen. That's a fact. It can definitely happen. It's happening. Yeah. I just want it to happen more. Yeah, it's happening more. <laughs> it happens with us, you know? I just want it to happen more. That's yeah, all. we should see it more. It's going to happen, though. So you still have, like, long songs, like four-minute songs. No, four actually. Minutes. If you're talking about my SoundCloud. The SoundCloud and your regular songs, I believe. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of my songs, I try to cut down certain aspects of the format. I do keep some of the songs long just yeah. because, you know, out of respect to older format, I understand right. that attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, well, we're gonna, we just going to keep going until we have 10 second songs. Like, I mean, somebody at some <laughs> point got to decide to just, exactly you know, start going a little retro and analog with stuff. So Lufa used to have two minute intros. Right. Lufa. So, um, I don't know who that is. Luther Vandross. Luther. Luther used to have. Luther. Luther. used to have two minute intros, and then you would still listen to his song, and then he would doom, 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 <laughs> at the end for like yeah, another two minutes. Right. So, it's more about the mood being conveyed in the song, which determines how long the song is going to be. Yes. How important is being a mentor and a positive influence to you? Um, extremely important because every single thing that I'm doing now is going to go away. Everything. None of this is going to matter. All that's going to matter. Why do you say that? No, I'm going into it. I'm, all that's going to matter is how I impact somebody else. Exactly. And how I touch somebody else. And the ripple effects of me. That's why I mean, like, I, singular. Your legacy lives on. Bro. Right. Yeah. And that's why it's important to me. Drop me in the water, you're not going to see the stone no more, but you'll see the ripples. And that's what people are. That's what the lives you touch are. So mentoring, I don't just, mentoring is just whoever God gives you the the opportunity to touch and, and build up and lead just by you being you and, my, and you intentionally choosing to do that. We are all mentoring somebody. Yes. It's just, are we doing it intentionally and what are we teaching them? Because that's what's going to live on. Right. That's us. Everything we've done and everything they think and everything they say when we're gone. Yeah. So that's why it's important. Yes, it's definitely important. You just brought me back to my days when I was teaching and shit. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm, I hope my children remember me. <laughs> yeah. Yo, and because I work they in do, education, just, I see it. Me, I've yeah. seen. They're like following me now. They want to see what's going on. It, my first job, I was a camper, and one of the students was in one of my fashion shows in college because we, wow. we were that. I didn't know we were that close in age. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you really do touch people <laughs> and then see it. No, like, yeah. It's like, oh, shoot, I didn't even know that. So, yeah, when I have those moments where I bump, in, bump into somebody and they groan and I forget, I just right. I hope it's good that they remember and not, yeah. <laughs> not, not anything negative. Exactly. So I was going to ask you, what motivates you into doing music and continue you to strive? What motivates me to... Um, just continue to strive and do music. Hmm. Well, what motivates me to continue to do music is because well first for me it feels like a second language like I genuinely love music I really do I know a lot of people say that and it's cliche but yeah no I really love music um 
and I cannot see it not being in my life in any capacity. Uh, but why I continue to share it is, well, dual part. Like, first, I wasn't sharing it fully. And I think I f- it always starts out like that. Like, when you're doing music, you kind of want to keep it to yourself. You're not sure some, about it. Yeah. Because I have a friend who started the same time with me. He was the complete opposite of that. So yeah. I don't think that's always true. I think that might always be true if you have some insecurities that you yeah. haven't worked out, though. Right. But, um, which I did. So, and then, you know, I was also struggling with what voice to use in my music. Because I, I a lot of people do their music and say they don't have to be a role model. But I did it kind of backwards. I became a role model by actual profession first. Yeah. And then I got into music. Right. So I can't, in my head, I could never not be thinking about whoever's consuming it. Yeah. So that's kind of what made me want to keep going because I'm like, well, I owe it to myself to want to express and share. There's so much I can share and right. so many people I can reach just by nature of who I am to them. And I can reach them in this outlet. Yeah. Um, and I also believe that there's so much that isn't shared that needs to be consumed. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say I'm not a motivational rapper. I'm not a conscious rapper. I, I feel like I'm a lifestyle rapper. I'm a lifestyle singer. I literally reflect what's happening around me yeah i'm sharing narratives that people forget i'm touching on the parts of the stories that nobody wants to talk about i'm touching on the feelings and saying the things that nobody wants to say i'm just finding palatable ways to do it because i know who i'm trying to speak to um and there is no compromise in that so uh because i realize that now i want to share even more and that's that's why i am um sharing still yes yes so how important is it for you to create a vibe and therapy and a mood and just, like, good feels for the audience when they're listening to your music? Because you um, definitely catch a vibe when you're listening to your music. It's, it's like feel-good music, i will say. Yeah, because a lot of music ain't feel good right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like when everyone's doing feel-good music, I'll probably be saying something else. But how important... It's, it's really important because... Nobody's no one who's listening to the music and no one is creating who's creating the music wants to waste their time. That's the first thing I think. Right. Quality time is my love language. You are spending time listening to me. I'm spending time creating this to share with you. I think it should be the best quality. Yes. I feel like it should be more than just whatever. It should be an experience. So that's why I try to put make it a narrative. I try to make sure that the vibe is in there. I want you to feel something yeah. because I didn't waste time and neither did you. And while you're here, it might as well be depositing something. So, yep. How did it feel performing at places like SOBs and colleges and just going around the East Coast performing? Like, how was that experience for you? Um, performing is always great. I love performing more than anything else. I feel my most alive when I'm yeah. on stage. It's because you're literally getting the energy right back instantaneously. Um, certain performances, I was super nervous when I did, like, SOBs. Oh, my gosh. If yeah. I could do SOBs all over again, <laughs> I definitely would. Man, people like to act like they did great at certain places yeah. because they got pictures that look good. Right. Nah, man, my pictures look great, but I feel like my performance is trash. So, <laughs> And it's not because I feel bad for myself, but, yeah. you know, when you grow and you get better, you look back, you're like, oh, man, I did that. I... So, yeah. It's, That's I, crazy. I was actually just, looking at a video the other day of SOBs. It's humbling. Yeah. It's just humbling to have had those experiences. And motive, when you look back and see what you really did, you're like, oh, I did that. I, phew, so much more I could do now. So it's, yeah. it's motivating. You got to give credit to yourself sometimes. Pat yourself on the back like, wow, well, yeah. I accomplished this much and I'm only going to go further in life. Absolutely. Do you have any favorite artists at the moment? If you can name two or three, let me know who it would be. Two? Like mainstream? It could be mainstream or underground. Let's start with mainstream. Um, and we'll see if I know the other ground. Mainstream right now. Who am I listening to? I feel like I've been. Let me look at my. <laughs> Your playlist? Yeah, let me look at who I've actually been listening to. He pulls up the Apple, y'all. The oh, Apple yeah, Music. Definitely. He pulls up the Apple Music. Yeah, like, who am I listening to? Nah, for who real, it's, listening it's a to? lot of different people here. Like, I see, I see who we got. So, okay, I'm gonna just name. I some see of, some dope covers, but nah, who we got I see, over yo, there? I got a lot of different. So I got division here. I really like division, okay, but that's not division. a new thing um, because well, I ain't giving nobody free. anyway. Division, mm. Swedish house mafia. So I'm all over the place. Christian Korea, that was a song. Like I don't know who he is, but I heard this song. Complicated, that was really good. Okay. Um, Snow Allegra, she's she's dope. 
Yeah, she is. So she's Everybody keep comparing her to Sade. What do you think about that? I ain't making no comparisons. Normani dropped some see. something new a while ago, and I was like, oh, she said she grown. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I see like that new song with Cardi. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, and then everything else is kind of oldies. Um, like throwback songs or songs that ain't new. I'm listening to Five E. I'm listening. To- nice. Okay, yeah. so you have already a different things you listen. Yeah. Underground artist Chelsea. I am Chelsea. I am. I'm just dropped a video that I was checking out. I'm listening. Well, not underground. Another mainstream Coco Sarai. Okay. I'm listening to Coco Sarai a lot. Uh, Ronnie B. He put out a project a little bit earlier in the year. Nice. Did you have to choose two people that you would a. like to do a song with? Superlative saying, sorry. Oh, it's fine. Shout them out. Shout them <laughs> out. Any more shout outs? I'm just shouting out my feet. Any more shout outs? Superlative saying, Geo, Lou. Lambo, <laughs> okay, <laughs> lyrics. Shout out to my pretty people. nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know, shout out to La Familia. Right. Yeah. Um, and all the people I didn't say. Uh, and all the people I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you? If you had to do a song with two people, who would it be? Any, any, like anybody. Yeah, you had your choice of two people of who you would love to collaborate with. Who would that, that two is people? Really hard. Be? Okay, I'm going to choose like someone who's I like, I know. <laughs> I'm going to choose someone who's accessible to me and I'm going to choose someone who's not accessible to okay. me. Okay. That'll make it fair. Okay. Well, kind of accessible. They may not be accessible. Like, Go I know for them. it. Reach for the stars. I, I, fake nervous, yeah. All right, so if I could do a song with anybody who isn't accessible to me, and this is like legit the first person I thought of, honestly, it'd be Big Sean. Okay, nice. I was listening to him earlier. Why yeah, Big, Big Sean? Big Sean or Joyner Lucas. Ooh, those are nice. I like that. Um, okay, I want to know why. I like Joyner. I, I like, like Big Sean. I like the transparency in their journey. Nice. I don't think they well, especially Big Sean. I think there's been a lot of transparency in his journey and his growth. Um, and you know, sometimes you look at artists who parallel whatever might have been going on in your life in a similar time. So not on the same level, obviously, yeah. but just when he speaks and what he's saying, there's a lot more content than what people that he be talking. So I would love to work with him. Yeah. Plus, I I'm dope. <laughs> yes. Sean Don, B I G Sean Don. Right. What's up? Uh, if it's somebody else, um, I know a lot of underground artists. That's why it's hard. I really want to work with a lot of them, like a lot of them. But if I could say, like, top three off the top of my, like, right now, and they're not underground, one of them is not underground no more. Coco Sarai, definitely. Um, another person I would want to work with is. Superlative saying, we're starting to work together. Um, he's a dude in the underground, oh, really dope. dope. Yeah. yeah, that's my homeboy. Like, I feel like we'll just come up with some. And then uh, another underground artist, Dizzy Cloud. That was dope too. Him. I don't know Dizzy. Yeah, he's out of um, Flatbush. Okay, Dizzy Cloud. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cloud. Nice, never heard of. But I'm it's always good vibes around you. So how important is it that you maintain that energy? Don't let nobody fuck with your energy. Very. Before um. You know, I've shared a lot, so I've spread myself thin a lot in the past. Yeah. Um, and I always try to give 100% energy to everything. But if you're not getting that back in, you're going right. to burn out. So to work on myself, I had to learn to put boundaries on. So definitely very important to maintain peace, not be stirred up, especially since I know once I'm once I'm there. I'm not sensitive, I'm emotional. So yeah. nothing trigger me like that, but once I'm there, I'm there. Right. <laughs> so yeah. And my energy is the same, pure and a lot. Right. Uh, so it's very important to me to just keep the right people around me, keep people who are open, and open means that you're willing to pour and you're willing to receive, and that yeah. helps me be my best self too. So. Right. Yes, yes. So tell me about a typical day with chosen. Wake up. What's the first step? I wake up. What's the first step? Uh, go back to sleep. <laughs> um, nah. Uh, wake up. Uh, I sit up. For a couple seconds, I breathe, like, intentionally for a bit. I pray. Um, if I'm feeling really, really good, I make sure I hit my stretches, my full body stretches right there. But that takes, like, 15, 20 minutes, so it depends. Um, so yeah. I go to the bathroom, uh, <laughs> do all the bathroom stuff. Right. Get out of the bathroom, stand there for, like, five minutes. <laughs> And, yeah, I really just be standing there frozen for a bit as I figure out what I'm going to do for the day. 
I go put on the kettle so I have something hot to drink. And then I go back to figure out what I'm wearing, throw on the clothes, blah, 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 blah. Look at myself a little bit. Bam, bam, bam. Smile at some point because it tricks your brain into being happy. Yes. And then I probably talk to my cat. Uh, oh, what's your cat's name? Treasure. Oh, Treasure. Yeah. What color? She is a blue-gray cat. Oh. Um, yeah, she fancy. What color um, is her eyes? I know I love cats. Sorry. Her eyes alternate between amber and green. Oh. I love cats. She got, like, hazel eyes. So, okay. yeah, um, yeah, and then I leave. Then I leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I leave. I'm not, I'm I'm learning to enjoy my house more now. Yes. I'm definitely one person who's, I'm cool not being in my house, but I'm enjoying it now. Yeah, I feel I'm tired. Yeah. So, if you had a choice of all the things you can do, what would it be? Your top pick? Or do you choose to do it all? Because I hate when people ask me that question, like, if as you had to choose one arts, thing, what would you music, speaking. As far as all of the things that you do, all of the many talents that you have. What is the one thing I would do? Like, what like, makes you the most happy? Do what do you love? If you have to do this one thing for the rest of your life. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that's, mm, no, that's not easy. Damn. I thought it was The easy question is, you can choose to do it all. Because that is an option. I believe that's I mean, an option. I thought that was a cop-out answer, so that's not... <laughs> that's what I wasn't going to say. That, I mean, I'm going to do it all. I would have said... You know what? I honestly might have said creative direction. Okay. And the reason why I said that is because creative direction would lend for me to be able to do them all. Yeah. If I'm in a director's spot, if certain things my vision calls for me to be in it, I'm going to be in it. Right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's a cheat answer. But outside of that, it'd definitely be... um. So sort of a mix between arts and mentoring. So I guess some form of program, some community-based program that's centered in the arts, I still try to mix them all. So right. Let's get into some of your songs. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, we playing We have the song, The Vibe. Tell me a little bit about The Vibe, because The Vibe oh. is definitely a vibe. It's very I'm chill. Waiting. It's very relaxed, and I feel like it's a classic, nice beat, you know? Yeah. You mentioned having a purpose, and you know this is the Purpose Radio Show and Podcast. So that's, you know, I have to ask you, what is your purpose chosen? What do you feel oh. your purpose is? Oh, um, my purpose is to invigorate and activate. Okay. I feel like I'm like electricity. I, if I touch it, it's charged up, and it will be. Then on, it's not the same as before the moment it was touched. So, invigorate, invigorate. and activate. Invigorate and activate, and don't hate. Okay. Yeah, that's a fact. Don't hate. Yes. So, well, tell me a little bit about the vibe, like. Um, the vibe. Um, I actually did that song after not performing and not recording for a while. That was actually right before, not too long before Corona, that I did the vibe, and I just never really you know, push it out there because, again, different period. Yeah. But when I went in the studio, that's really how I was feeling. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't a, oh, let me sit down and write this for Mad Long. Yeah. I'm not really that type of a writer You anyway. said because I want it, I'm going to have it. Yeah. And I, I deserve it. it. I have a purpose. Yeah, I was feeling it, and I wanted yeah. people to feel it. Yeah. So that's why it was called a vibe because... It was the vibe that you was feeling, and you had yeah, to make everybody like else feel that vibe. vibe. Get on my vibe. That's okay? a fact. That's a fact. You know Get on my, my vibe. vibe. Get on my vibe. Feel my vibe. So, is the song called Netflix and Chosen, or um, just Netflix? It's called Netflix and Chosen. Nice. Um, it's it's yeah. The reason I did that is because when the song for, when I first came out with this song, you can ask yo, you can ask Frank Knight. Nobody was saying Netflix and Chill, and I had a little Wayne moment. I wasn't smart enough to copyright that, right. and then Netflix and Chill became a whole thing because it was gonna be called Netflix and Chill. So I just called it Netflix and Chosen because of CH. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but I didn't want to leave it Netflix by itself because I've had issues with lawyers taking my stuff down. Okay. So. Yeah, Netflix. You're basically telling a story mm -hmm. about chilling with a girl. The hook is nice. I really like the hook. Thank you. Sit back, relax. We could just relax. We could just rest. Yes, yes. I love them. Yes. Really cool. And I like Caged Up. Let's get a little bit about Let's talk a little bit about Caged Up. I wrote Caged Up in the middle of Corona. It was, um, 
a couple of weeks after my god brother passed away. Oh, sorry for that. Oh no, I you know um, said in love to his family. Yeah. Um, but it was a it, my god brother was a rapper. Uh, his name is Raw um, R A W. That was also his initials. And I remember um, years before he had came to New York and told me I need to start up. And a little bit before um, Corona happened, he told me he wasn't sure he was going to keep going. Like, he was kind of over it type yeah. stuff. But I thought he might have been having a moment. And I remember after, you know, his passing, I I, I was just over <laughs> a lot of things because I had already had a few people pass before him. Right. Um, and this, caged up, when, you know, when you finally get back to it, when the wall in front of you turns out to be a door and you can keep going forward. Yeah. Um, how are you going to move now? So that was more, I guess, a declaration to me. Like, I needed to hear that, and I needed to say that. I needed to remind myself who I was. Exactly. And at the same time, tell everybody else who I was going to be. Right. Um, so that's... Talk your shit. That's, <laughs> that's caged up. Yes, he was. He was caged up. Talking about nobody going to sleep on me. You talk about being balanced. You talk about people throwing shade and how you upgraded. So that's definitely a dope song. I like intro, too. Intro... It starts off with some news snippets, and you have your beautiful voice on there just singing, and then you have the background vocals. Oh, my God, the background vocals was everything. It's just a beautiful song. I love it. Thank you. It was a nightmare. Why did you say it was a nightmare? No, I mean, literally. The it's the intro was suppo- supposed to be, like, in my head. Yeah. When I thought of everything that was going on in 2020, because I also wrote that towards the end. Right. I tried to put 2020 in a song, and that's why it starts off with got some butters on and now we toasting. Right. That's New Year's. Yeah. So literally, I was thinking of how the year started and what I was feeling emotionally and what was going on with all of my friends and millennials and all the things we struggle with. And just all of that. Yeah. Coupled with all the news. Nice. You know. You showed your versatility. I see you did Uptown Vibes. A remix to it from Meek Mill. Oh, Yo, you really did your, Yo, you did did. your research. Yes, this is Ebony J with the Purpose Yo. Radio Show Podcast. I'm and everybody like, comes on here. I'm going to do my fucking research, okay? I went to the SoundCloud. I went to Yo. the YouTube. I went to the Instagram. I went to the bio. I'm going to do my fucking research. This is my job. Yo, I honestly did not. I was like, I ain't sent her that. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, so nah. I just see you. You are very versatile. You did sold out. You did uptown vibe. So really good shit. Good shit. You're basically saying I wish I was being well, and I wish being in love. That's the song that I found on SoundCloud. You're basically saying that you wish being in love and that being in love isn't isn't enough. I wish being in love was enough to make it all work. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, sometimes being in love isn't enough to make it all work. Right. And it's a lot more than fairy tale feelings, man. Exactly. <laughs> I could definitely feel you on that. Yeah, it's real definitely life. Definitely feel you on that. So do you have any new music, new projects? Tell the people where they can find you. Um, well, you guys can find me at Chosen King 114 on Instagram. Yes. Uh, y'all can find my music on Audio Mac and SoundCloud. The extra credit is my most recent release. It is, uh, I'm going to let y'all listen to it. It's a mix. Think of it like a playlist on your old <laughs> tape cassette that, that doesn't work that well anymore. That's literally what I want you to think of extra credit as. Um, it introduces themes to a project I have coming out that y'all have seen me post about, MLP, My Late Pass. Um, that was supposed to be out already, but ran into some legal situations. Yeah. So as that's getting cleared up, it's slated for fall. Um, so, yeah, extra credit is going to give you the taste of some of the things that we're touching on in MLP. And intro is the first song on MLP. So that'll be the next release and my first video. So this is the Purpose Radio Show and Podcast, and this is Thursday. So I have to ask you, TPIP Thursdays, turn pain into purpose Thursdays. Let me know what time that you turned your pain into purpose. The time that I turned my pain into purpose. Yes. When MLP dropped at 10-something that night, I was getting hit up about all of these great responses. I went to sleep after being up for 48 hours straight, woke up the next morning, and MLP was pulled. I had the letters from lawyers, from legal, from the head of the distribution, all of that. Spoke to them, literally back and forth. It was staying pulled. Instead of shutting down like I would have every other time that something happened with my music, 
I literally sat there that day and created extra credit, which you can go listen to Bam. on Audio Mac as the prequel to MLP, my late pass. And now we got a theme. Yes, yes, yes. You can follow Chosen at Chosen King. 114. You can follow me at Ebony J. Hey, E B O N Y, the letter J H E Y. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's hey. hey, hey. J with the Purpose Radio Show and Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for streaming. Shout out to Astro Media. And that's it, baby, baby. Thank you. I feel it. Damn. What's your purpose?